At the very end of their Comic-Con panel this year, Marvel's big reveal was Josh Brolin, who voices and dons the dots to play Thanos, wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. So clearly they think that's a big deal, but do you? Marvel Studios head honcho Kevin Feige has said time and time again that Thanos is the big bad of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that the Avengers are on a collision course with the Mad Titan for their third film. But truth is, Feige has yet to show this, or even strongly hint at it, in the actual films. So today, here's your Thanos primer and what you're supposed to know about him, but likely don't. Now in Guardians of the Galaxy, you'll see Thanos and hear Thanos, but largely via hologram. But his name will be whispered. Oh, how it will be whispered! As Marvel seeks to show that at least in space, Thanos has established a badass reputation. In fact, one could argue that the whole point of making Guardians of the Galaxy, and perhaps even its sequel, is to get Thanos on the board. Gamora and Drax have direct ties to him, while Ronan and Nebula are his enforcers. And a large part of this movie will focus on an Infinity Stone, one of six that power the Infinity Gauntlet. And you've already been introduced to three others. Say what? Yes, apparently Marvel's directors have never heard of Alfred Hitchcock's Rule of Three. If you want the audience to be aware of something, you must reference it in some way, verbally, visually, etc., three times. Watch Strangers on a Train or a Rope for textbook examples. So where have we seen these Infinity Stones? Apparently, the Tesseract is one, as well as the glowy part of Loki's scepter. Yeah, they don't even look like stones. At least it could fit into a glove. Then there was that thing they gave Zany Benicio del Toro in the end credits of Thor The Dark World, and as you might recall, he said, one down, five to go. Now, the Infinity Stones each have a special power, and the gauntlet allows the wearer to wield all six. There's the Time Gem, which allows time travel, stopping time, control over the speed of time, and aging. The Space Gem allows teleportation, the creation of wormholes, etc. The Soul Gem allows control over the living and the dead, plus control of the evolution of the mind and body. The Reality Gem allows you to manipulate the very laws of the universe. The Power Gem gives you raw power and the ability to increase or decrease any force. And the Mind Gem basically turns you into Jean Grey. How does one stop such a weapon? In the comics, the Infinity Gauntlet has either gone on the fritz or been stopped by diplomacy. Yes, sir, Joss Whedon certainly has his work cut out for him making this battle believable, interesting, and somewhat of a fair fight. Why is Thanos even doing all this? To impress a chick. But not just any chick, Lady Death herself, who Thanos, an outsider his whole young life on Titan, has fallen madly in love with. Lady Death rebuffs his advances, so he aims to win her over with a shower of gifts. And what does Lady Death want more than mass death across the universe? To better understand Thanos' motivations, I highly recommend you read the recent Thanos Rising miniseries from Marvel, and I've included a link in the video description to where you can buy it. So far, the Marvel Cinematic Universe hasn't had much luck with villains, their best one turned into an anti-hero. Will Kevin Feige's villain woes be solved by Thanos? Is this a throwdown you're eager to see? A weapon you're eager to see in action? Or is your money on Ultron? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.